Hello, welcome to Worship in the Word. Hey. It's our eighth broadcast. Hopefully we're getting some things right by now. <laughs> Trying to get our sound and everything right. I think I do. Don't see anybody on yet, but hopefully they'll join us shortly. This is one of Debbie's songs we're starting off with called Blanket of Love. And you know, we God surrounds us with His love. And His love is a shield for us. And His love is everything we need if we just come into his presence amen let's sing it together i'm resting here in your presence lord Mercy so sweet, it beckons me to go deeper, deeper in your love. And I'm overwhelmed by the grace that you give, it strengthens my heart and gives me peace within to go deeper, deeper in your love. Even in the times of uncertainties, you are always there to give your grace to me. Your love is like a blanket of security. I can wrap up in your love. It's your grace that gives me what I don't deserve. When I make mistakes, you give me mercy. When my heart condemns me, I can wrap up in your love it's your grace that gives me what i don't deserve when i make mistakes you give me mercy when my heart condemns me i can wrap up in your love i'm resting here in your presence lord Mercy so sweet, it beckons me to go deeper, deeper in your love. And I'm overwhelmed by the grace you give, it strengthens my heart, peace within to go deeper, deeper in your love. Even in the times of uncertainties, you are always there to give your grace to me. Your love is like a blanket of security. I can wrap up in your love. It's your grace that gives me what I don't deserve. When I make mistakes, you give me mercy. When my heart condemns me, I can wrap up in your love. It's your grace that gives me what I don't deserve. When I make mistakes, you give me mercy. When my heart condemns me, I can wrap up in your love. You know, there's a lot of truth in that song. I don't want to bypass the truth and just... We can rest in His presence because we know that no matter what we're going through or what kind of week we've had, he's always there and he always loves us. You know, we have two dogs. I'm sure a lot of you have pets as well. I know a lot of you do. And I've made it a point. You know, we correct them, we scold them when necessary, but we never withhold our love from them, even when they've been bad. And you know, God never withholds his love from us. Even when we're uncertain, the word says, even when we're faithless, he remains faithful. We can always run into his arms. <coughs> it's your grace that gives me what I don't deserve. When I make mistakes, you give me mercy. 
When my heart condemns me, I can wrap up in your love. It's your grace that gives me what I don't deserve. When I make mistakes, you give me mercy. When my heart condemns me, I can wrap up in your love. When my heart condemns me, I can wrap up in your love. My heart condemns me, I can wrap up in your love. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Thank you that you see no stain on us because we're forgiven much and you're our king and you're our righteousness and we can boldly come into your presence. Jesus, you are my king, you're my king. Lamb of God, you're my sin. Offering there is none who would die for my gain. You alone made this selfless exchange, for your love will never fail. Your love. sing you are my righteousness my life is in your hands in your hands now and never more i say i am forgiven much your mercy knows no end knows no end it knows no end oh, thank you lord your mercy knows no end I declare, you're my God, you're my God. You've removed all my fears, all my doubts. At the cross, there your will is revealed. Every sickness and pain you have healed. For your love will never I am forgiven much Your mercy knows no end Knows no end Now and evermore I say You are my righteousness My life is in your hands In your hands Now and evermore I say I am forgiven much Your mercy knows no end Knows no end, knows no end. Thank you, Lord. We can call on your name anytime. Lord, I call on your name, on your name. You've removed all my sin, all my shame. By your grace, in your arms I am found Dearly loved with the goodness I'm crowned I want you to hear that again, listen Lord, I call on your name, on your name You've removed all my sins, all my shame By your grace, in your arms I am found Dearly loved with goodness and crown, for your love will never fail. Your love will never fail. Now and evermore, I 
say, you are my righteousness, my life is in your hands, in your hands. Now and evermore, I say, I am forgiven much, your mercy knows no end, knows no end. Now and evermore, I say, you are my righteousness, my life is in your hands, in your hands. Now and evermore, I say, I am forgiven much, your mercy knows no end, knows no end, knows no end. Mercy knows no end. Your mercies are new every morning, Lord. For you are faithful, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You know, we have a God that supplies all our needs. And sometimes it may not seem like it. Sometimes it seems like he's a day late, a <laughs> dollar short. You know, come on now. You've thought that. Maybe you hadn't said it. But he's faithful. And if we just trust in him, he loves us. And this song talks about he's Jehovah Jireh. He's Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah Sidkenu, which is the Lord our righteousness, and Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner. And Jehovah Roah, Ruah, you are my shepherd. Jehovah Shama, the Lord that's always there. Jehovah Rapha, my healer. And he's Lord, Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts. Or one version in the Bible that I've read before translates that the Lord of the angel armies what a thought amen our God is an awesome God Jehovah Jireh you see my need and you provide Jehovah Shalom you are my peace Jehovah Sikkanu, you are my righteousness. Jehovah Nisi, you reign in victory. And I will worship you, and I will praise you. I put my trust in you, you are the great I am. I will worship you, and I will praise you. I put my trust in you, you are the great I am. Jehovah Roa, you are my shepherd. Jehovah Shaba, you are always with me. Jehovah Rapha, you are my healer. Jehovah Saba, you are the Lord of hosts. And I will worship you, and I will praise you. I put my trust in you, you are the great I am, and I will worship you. And I will praise you. I put my trust in you. You are the great I am. You are my provider, my peace. You are always with me. You are my victory. You are the Lord of hosts. You are my shepherd, my healer. I am that I am. Jehovah is your name. my need and you provide Jehovah Shalom you are my peace Jehovah Sikkanu you are my righteousness Jehovah Nisi you reign in victory and I will worship you and I will praise you I put my trust in you 
You are the great I am, and I will worship you, and I will praise you. I put my trust in you, you are the great I am. Over Roma, you are my shepherd, Jehovah Shammah. You are always with me, Jehovah Rapha. You are my healer, Jehovah Sabo. You are the Lord of hosts, and I will worship you. And I will praise you. I put my trust in you. You are the great I am, and I will worship you. And I will praise you. I put my trust in you. You are the great I am. Your provider, my peace, you are always with me. You are my victory. You are the Lord of hosts. You're my shepherd, my healer. I am that I am. Jehovah is your name. You are Jehovah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Lord, how wonderful you are. Have stored up so many good things for us. Like a treasure chest overflowing, spilling blessing upon us. Lord, how wonderful you are. How wonderful you are. You have stored up so many good things for us. Like a treasure chest. Overflowing, spilling blessings upon us. Lord, that's how wonderful you are. I will praise you. You are the one that I adore. Lord.
Lord, how wonderful you are. You have stored up so many good things for us. Like a treasure chest, overflowing, spilling blessings upon us. Lord, that's how wonderful a good God. I love this song by Jill and Charlie LeBlanc. Give them credit for this one. It's a great song. For the steadfast faithful love by the Lord Raises my heart, and I will offer sacrifice of praise for the mercy and unfailing love of the Lord. It's new every day. My heart cries. Thankfulness to you. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the Lamb. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, 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 bless the Lamb, hallelujah, 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 bless the Lamb, oh, the steadfast faithful love of the Lord embraces my heart and I will offer sacrifice a praise for the mercy and unfailing love of the Lord Faithful love of the Lord 
from I believe it's Psalm 150 and I think it's in there twice I, I've looked it up before if you look in the original language which is Hebrew that's where that word is used hallelujah in Psalm 150 if you're not familiar with it is a a song of high praise it talks about symbols and everything let everything that hath breath praise the Lord Praise the Lord, I think it says. And I think that's where that word is used. And that's what that word means. Yah is short for Yahweh. And it literally means bless the Lord. You know, the, the world sometimes tries to steal things from us and devalue them. I've heard secular songs use the word hallelujah, and I'm thinking... Every time you say that, you're saying, praise the Lord. <laughs> and I bet they don't even know it. That's what that word means. Praise the Lord. So sing it like you mean it. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the Lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, bless the Lamb. Hallelujah, 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 bless the Lamb. Hallelujah, 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 bless the Lamb. songs too and I think it's it's just got an anointing on it when you're really struggling sorry let me turn the reverb off when you're really struggling and just need to get in the Lord's presence God's word says in Matthew eleven twenty eight, come to me and I will give you rest is easy, my burden is light. 
text us one the other night, and, and her question was, "What's your what's your favorite warfare song, or battle song?" And we immediately was like, "Which one do we say?" Because there's so many of them out there. But really, the best warfare that we can possibly do is literally crawling up in the lap of our Father and letting Him fight that battle for us. Because His weapons are powerful. They're mighty. They're strong. They pull down strongholds. And there's no way the enemy can win when my daddy starts fighting. My daddy's a big daddy. And one of the best ways to engage in spiritual warfare is like I've said time and time again, under the shadow of the Almighty, under the wings, under the protection of my Father. That's where your warfare is. And again, like I said last week, when Jesus engaged in battle with the, with the devil, he did it with the word. It is written. So whatever you're going through, and when you go through it, find a scripture in the word that speaks to your heart. And stand on that word. Sink your teeth into it. Crawl up in daddy's lap. And say, daddy, what does this scripture mean? And because he wrote it, he can tell you what it means. He can give you revelation knowledge and revelation understanding and that word will be something you can stand on and as you crawl up in his lap the enemy cannot stand God's peace he cannot stand when you're going through the midst of the battle in the midst of the war in the midst of the cares of life when things aren't fair when you're come against when you're attacked he can't stand it when you walk through it with peace but only God can give you that peace keep your mind on him trust in him rely on him depend on him lean on him and let him fight that battle for you and that's one of the this, this scripture is based on Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 and 30, when Jesus said, Come unto me, all you that are labor, laboring and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's what this particular song is based on. We can always run to Daddy, crawl up in his lap, and let him wrap his blanket of love around us. That's, my friends, how you do warfare. Through the peace that only Daddy can give. His yoke is easy. His burden is light.
I just can't reiterate what she's saying enough. And believe me, we've been there. We've been there lately. When everything is coming against you, and, and something inside just screams, God, where are you? Why can't I hear you voice? Because when we were in turmoil, and he's whispering in that still, small voice, we're not hearing him. But if we can just crawl up in his presence and just worship him, and let him minister to us, let him feel his, let him feel our peace, feel his peace, I'm sorry. Then he gives rest. In his presence, there's fullness of joy. In his presence, there's life evermore. If you've never experienced that presence, just, just close your eyes and sing something you know. Say something you know. Worship him. What's worship? Just talking directly to your father. Saying, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. I need you. I need your presence. I need your peace. Thank you, Lord. There's another weapon that he's also given us in the Word. And it's knowing who we are in him. Outside of him, when we try to handle situations and circumstances and fight and battle in our own strength, that's when we get knocked down. That's when we get injured physically, spiritually, emotionally. That's when it overcomes us because we're trying to fight in our own strength. But did you know that the same exact resurrection power that Jesus had, you know, we're coming up on Easter and churches all over the United States and probably all over the world are going to be talking about the resurrection power that Jesus has. Well, I got good news for you. You have that same resurrection power living inside you. You want me to prove it in Scripture? Well, here goes. Galatians chapter 2, verses 20, Paul says... I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. We have the same resurrection power that Jesus has because he gave us all authority and all power. He had the authority and the power and he gave it to you and me. Romans chapter 8 verses 10 and 11 says, Now Christ lives his life in me. And even though my body may be dead because of the effects of sin, his life-giving spirit imparts life into me because I'm fully accepted by God. You are fully accepted by God. Yes, God raised Jesus to life. And since God's spirit of resurrection lives in me, he will also raise my dying body to life by that same spirit that breathes life into me. And then over in 1 John 4, 17, it goes on to say, by living in God, we love has been brought to its full expression in us so that we may fearlessly face the day of judgment because as Jesus now is, so are we in this world. Is Jesus all broken? Is he downtrodden? Is he hurt? Is he crying? Is he depressed? Is he sick? I can't find anywhere in the scripture where he lived one second of defeat. One second of anguish. No, and neither should we. 
we have the resurrection power of Jesus living in us. And as Jesus is now, so are we in this world. Why? Because he became our exchange on the cross. He took our sin, he took our sickness, he took our disappointments, our failures, our depression, our suicidal thoughts, our schizophrenic minds, our whatever. He took every bit of that on himself. He took that away from us. And he gave us his righteousness, his health, his peace, his prosperity, his, his, his life, his resurrection power. He gave that to us. And that's why, as Jesus is, so are we in this world. We have his resurrection power living in us. So when the enemy comes against us, we are, as we say in the South, we are loaded to the gill with ammunition. Come on. I got it. But it's not me that has it. It's he that's within me that has that. So we can hide in our Father's, in our father's love and our Father's protection. And our big brother Jesus stands up and he fights those battles for us. Because it's his strength that lives in us. The song is by New Creation Church and it's called As He Is, So Are We. Though darkness comes, no fear will overwhelm. His love has rescued me. His blood was shed and death was overcome. He has won the victory. Jesus won the victory. As he is, so are we. The resurrection life is in me. As he is, so are we. The resurrection life lives in me. And carried all my pain, his stripe has made me whole. Seated in Christ, my fears they fade away. He has the final say, Jesus has the final say as he is. As he is, so are we. The resurrection Christ lives in me. As he is, so are we. The resurrection life is in me. As he is, so are we. From earth to heaven, your grace and truth declared through every generation. Your word is spoken, the grave is shaken, the blind shall see again, the captive set free. Your name exalted. 
exalted from earth to heaven your grace and truth declare to every generation your word is spoken the grave is shaken your word is spoken captive set free as he is so are we As he is, so are we. The resurrection Christ gives in me. The resurrection Christ gives in me. I just want you to hear the words again. Because this is such truth in this song. Debbie said, as he is in 1 John, so are we. And there's a lot in that. We are his righteousness in Christ. It says that. It's in the word. By his blood, we've been made whole. We've been forgiven. The second verse has a statement that might shock some people. It says, his stripe has made me whole. I was listening to someone teach on that the other day. And in the Hebrew, and that's out of Isaiah 53, it literally used the word in the singular, his stripe. And and you know, we want to say, well, what about the cat of nine tails? And what about the 40 stripes? Jesus' back was so beaten, so scarred, that there weren't stripes. His whole back was just one big scar. It was just one big stripe. That's how much he paid for your, for your peace, for your healing, for your comfort, whatever area you need him in. His blood covered it. If you could just visualize what Jesus was beat with, they called the cat of nine tails. It had shards of glass and sharp broken bones in it. So every time he had a lash, every time they hit him with that cat of nine tails, it ripped his flesh open. And the strikes, the the hits, the lashes that he received every single time ripped into his flesh so that his internal organs could be viewed his lungs his arteries his pancreas his liver his spleen the kidneys everything was completely all the muscles completely exposed all the way down to his bones there was no flesh left and this particular teacher that was talking, I think it was last night we were listening to him, and he said he was speaking with a Greek scholar and if there were one piece of flesh that was left, oh it's Hebrew, one piece of flesh that was left on his back they would have to say stripes but because he was completely mutilated beyond any recognition of human form that's why the actual term was not stripes plural but stripe because his whole entire back was completely mutilated you couldn't even tell he was a he was a person and that's why when he was carrying the cross up that hill he physically had no strength left he also had no muscles left and if anybody has had muscles damaged ligaments and tendons ripped and torn they don't work without ligaments and tendons you can't move your muscles you can't move your skeleton in the medical field I'm a nurse in the medical field you have flexors and you have extenders on your ligaments and tendons and that's when they flex and, and relax that's what actually moves your skeleton that's what moves your body and when you 
when your your muscles and ligaments are torn and your tendons are torn, there's no movement. So that's why Jesus physically collapsed under the weight of that cross because his ligaments and muscles and tendons, everything was just mutilated because of his beating. He did that for us. He did that for me and you. What he bore on his back, those stripes that he bore on his back, was for our healing. person we was listening to brought this out. In scripture, don't say it exactly, but if you look in history, I think it'll bear it out. You know, crucifixion was a common Roman torture device used to kill people. It was very common. They used it on certain prisoners. I don't know to what extent if they had to commit certain crimes, but it was very well known and very well used to torture people to death. Jesus wasn't the first and the one the last to be crucified. And there were many that were beaten. And by the way, Hebrew law, and you can look it up, says that they could only beat somebody 40 stripes. And it wasn't with the cat of nine tails. That was a Roman thing. But what she's talking about, Jesus wasn't beaten by the Jews. Paul talks about in Acts that he was beaten by the Jews twice or three times or something like that, I forget. 40 stripes or 39, 40 minus one. <coughs> Jesus wasn't beaten by the Jews. Jesus was beaten by the Romans. Pilate sent him to be flogged and it was Roman guards and the cat of nine tails and then Jewish law had no meaning to them. I don't know. Scripture doesn't say how many times he was beaten. But I assure you the Romans didn't care about Jewish law. And what was uncommon, for someone to be beaten and crucified was unheard of, according to what I've, he said. That's why Jesus was so weak. Although... Many were crucified, many were beaten. See, Pilate's wife had had a dream, have nothing to do with this man, and he tried everything he could to say, hey, tell you what, your, your tradition says that because of this feast coming up, I have to release a prisoner. Would you rather have Barabbas or Jesus? What he really wanted was him to say, oh, release Jesus, because Barabbas was a known criminal. But to his surprise, they said, no, crucify him. And could it be that what, what Pilate really wanted was to have him beaten and said, look at him. He suffered enough. Look how much he's already suffered. Isn't that enough? And the crowd said, no, we want to crucify him. So he endured more torture than any human being before or since has ever known. Because he endured been beaten up with an inch of his life and then crucified I can only I can't imagine how much pain that would have been and why did he do it Isaiah 53 he was wounded for my transgressions bruised for my iniquities chastised for my peace and by his stripe I am healed Wow, what a God. Though darkness comes, no fear will overwhelm. His love has rescued me. His blood was shed in death was overcome. He won the victory. Jesus won the victory. As he is, so are we. The resurrection life is in me. As he is, so are we. The 
resurrected Christ lives in me. The resurrected Christ lives in me. He bore my grief and carried all my pain. His stripe has made me whole. Seated in Christ, my fears they fade away. Jesus has the final say. As he is, so are we. The resurrection life is in me. As he is, so are we. Your name exalted from earth to heaven. Your grace and truth declared to every generation. Your word is spoken, your grave is shaken. The blind shall see again, the captive set free. Your name exalted from earth to heaven. Your grace and truth declared to every generation. Your word is spoken, the grave is shaken. The blind shall see again, the captive set free. As he is, so are we. In resurrection, Christ is in me. As he is. felt like maybe somebody's shoulder was being healed a while ago. If you've had a problem in your shoulder, just move it around. See what the Lord has done. Maybe you had limited range of motion. Maybe there was pain all the time. I don't know. I feel like maybe it was in an accident. Maybe a car accident. I don't know. Your shoulder was in injured. You know, we serve a healing God, and Lord, we just speak life, and we thank you for your healing power. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for your love. We thank you that because of the cross, we have been made the righteousness of Christ. And that's your word. We can stand on that. And you will never be angry with us again. And we can crawl up in your lap, good days or bad days. And just take our yoke, your yoke upon us and learn of you. Because that's what you said. <coughs> and that's what you desire for us tonight. Just to receive all that you had. You know, the greatest thing we can do to please the Lord is just to receive. You know, what an insult it would be to say, well, God, well, you know, I thank you, but let me earn it. You know, if you do that, you're getting into the law and you don't have God's favor. There's no favor in the law. Favor comes through grace in the blood of Christ. And simply believing that he's paid the price for our sins, for our diseases, for our peace, for our provision. Look at Psalm 103, it's all there. And he wants to crown us with glory and honor. I heard a good definition of glory this week. I've always had trouble wrapping my mind around that word when it talks about the glory of the Lord and it's used about kings and others too. 
And if I remember it right, this person said, you know, glory is that outward manifestation of all that a person is. I'm like, wow, I like that. I wanted to remember that. Just think of all that God is, all his goodness, all his mercy, that outward manifestation, the gold streets, the splendor, the angels, those were just outward signs of all that he is and how much he loves us and how great he is. That's the God that we serve. Well, I pray this is ministered to you tonight. And if any of you have any prayer requests or any thoughts that you want to get back to us, just respond to the link. And right. don't forget, we also have an email. You have any comments or suggestions, prayer requests, praise reports, whatever, any kind of communication you want to communicate with us. And the email address is hogm218 at gmail.com. And you'll see it on the banner at the end of the broadcast, hogm218 at gmail.com. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. We love God you bless guys. you, and we love you.